Okay. Ketze Shulchan Aruch, the abridged code of Jewish law, chapter 98, and we are up to uh, 33. 33. Okay. Lamed Gimel. Okay. So, again, we're, we're discussing what we can and can't do on, on Yontav, which Malachas. So, Dava She'ena Malacha Gemurah, something that's not a complete, literally, saying a full-scale Malacha. In other words, it's the Rabbonin. It's a, it's a rabbinic decree. So, something that we can't do on, on Shabbos due to a rabbinic decree because it's a, a partial Malacha. Let's say it's half of it. Or it's a cause and various things. The Asalasa is Bashabas, Mashum Rafus, Lakhila, Rafur Lakhila, Sha'in Baisakon. And you still can't do it, still not allowed to do it on Shabbos for a sick person who's not in danger. So um, a a sick person who is in danger, God forbid, either for the life or a limb. Um, of course, this this override Shabbos, because Nefesh override Shabbos. And then we'll have things that um, it's rabbinic, but it does override Shabbos. Let's say, for an example, uh, a person who, you know, they're not going to die, Baruch Hashem, but they're, they're bedridden. You know, they're still quite ill. And um, normally, we can't ask a non Jew, rabbinic decree, we can't ask a non Jew to do malacha, to do any of the the forbidden acts for us. But in this case, for this for this person who's not well, we can't ask. Or um, muksa, certain types of muksa, things that we can't uh, move on Shabbos, a rabbinical decree to help protect us from breaking Shabbos. You know, perhaps we could move something muksa or use something muksa again for this, for this person who's not well. So, but if we have something on Shabbos, even, even though it's not a full malacha, it's a rabbinic decree, but it's not something we can do for a a sick person, for a choyla, for someone that's not well. Then gam beyontav rishon shel yontav. Then also first day yontav, the gam shnei yomim toivim shel rosh shana, and on the first on the two days rosh shana, also lasoi lasoi soi. It's forbidden to do them. Kim aliyeh daygoi. Only through a non-Jew. We can ask a non-Jew. So anything like that, um, we can't do. Um, Avil, however, the Yomtev Shani, on the second day Yomtev, and again, most editions now have a brackets saying, again, Chutz Rosh except for second day Rosh Hashanah, because Rosh Hashanah is an exception to the rule of second day Yomtev. You can even do them through a Jew. You can have a Jew do it. Something that's that's not a complete mock. And we're, we're going to give uh, uh, some examples shortly. Let's just get the, the concept. Of a malacha gemurah, but a, a full malacha. Also la soysa you can't even do for an unwell person who um, uh, that doesn't have any danger. A fill the yontav sheni. So those you can't even do second day, second day uh, yontav. Kiim ali goy only through a a, a non Jew. The shalas chacham, and you should you should ask a rabbi about lachik authority exactly what you can do and can't do. So let's get some practical examples. Let's first sum it up, and we'll get some practical examples. So we'll go in reverse order of, of, of the book, because I think it'll make it a little bit easier for us to understand. Full blown malacha. Right? In other words, it's 100%. It's a full malacha. And you, it's malacha that you can't do for a patient that's not critically ill. So again, obviously, the person's critically ill. We can do anything, or almost anything. Right, so we can't we can't kill someone else, we can't murder someone else. So, uh, you know, for example, if someone needs a heart transplant and we don't have one available, you can't just grab someone else and kill them to take their heart. 
right? So there are certain things that are never overruled to save a life, right? But um, when it comes to Shabbos, if it's a life-threatening situation, pretty much everything is is overruled on, on, on Shabbos in order to save a life. But if we have, it's something that's not overruled for a regular sick person, regular sick person. And again, um, just to clarify, it doesn't have to be that the person at this moment is about to, to die. You know, if we just give an example, let's say um, a diabetic who needs to take uh, an insulin injection. So right now they're doing fine, right? You don't have to wait till it's seven hours past when they need to get it. And, and now they start, you know, falling into a coma, you know, about just about to give them the injection. You can, you can do things preventative, right? So you can give it to them uh, when they normally, they can give it to themselves when they normally take it, right? So uh, life-threatening doesn't mean that the person is going to, to pass away at this moment. It means even if, God forbid, it's going to develop to that situation if, if we don't deal with it. But then we have something, let's say, for example, a person has a very bad flu. Very bad flu, and they're bedridden, and it's not comfortable. They're quite, um, you know, they feel terrible, but they're not in any danger. Not in any danger. So there would be many things that you could do for a person that was, God forbid, uh, in a life-threatening situation. You can't do for this person. Um, so... But then, then so, so anything that's going to be a full malachi, uh, in other words, it's a Torah prohibition, we can't even do for this person on either day of Yontav. Now, if it's something that's a, a uh, rabbinical decree, um, so let's say, for example, um, washing the entire body. Right? So, uh this person they're not life-threatening situation but they're you know they're they're quite unwell and they will feel a lot better if if you know they got properly washed or they were able to wash themselves because uh normally onto we can't we can we can only wash the the hands the feet and the face can't wash the entire body so on first day yontav we could do this through a non-jew and second day Yonta, we could even do this through a Jew. So that, that would be uh, an example. Um, there's certain types of medicines that we can't mix, we can't prepare. And the reason we can't do it is rabbinical decree on Shabbos. We're worried that the person will come to grind the, uh, the, the ingredients. Right? I mean, today... Which is most most medicines we buy are, are pre-mixed. They're all, you know, you buy the finished product. But it used to be people prepared when you prepare the medicines, they uh, they would grind the various ingredients and mix it together and, and maybe boil it and different things, whatever they had to do. So on Shabbos, we have this uh, again life-threatening situation. We we'll do whatever we need to do. But if it's not life-threatening situation, since the malacha is we can't grind up spices or, or food on Shabbos, can't grind on Shabbos. So therefore, we can't make this medicine. And the rabbinic decree that, uh, you know, depends what type of medicine is, but some medicines we couldn't even give it to the person on Shabbos because we're worried that if we allow, if we're allowed to give it to the person, we're going to come to grind on Shabbos. So on the first day Yontav, so on Yontav, even though you're allowed to grind food, grind spices, but again, that's something that can't be ground the day before, and it's food. And this medicine probably, you know, often could have been ground the day before, and it's not really food. So first day Yontav, we could do it through a non-Jew, have the non-Jew grind it. And on second day Yontav, we can even do it ourselves. So these are, these are examples of, of this concept. Okay. Lama Dalad, 34. Haitsa Maturas Beyontav. So carrying 
outside in a public domain is permitted on Yom Tov. Now, many large Jewish cities today have an Erev. I know a lot of people in Florida uh, live in Florida here on, on this year, and there's, uh, I mean, I don't know exactly which areas uh, are in the Erev, but I know a lot of the main Jewish areas are in Erev. Where I live here in Phoenix, there's an Erev. So uh, we learned about that when we learned the laws of Shabbos. It's like we, we put some type of uh, enclosure around an area, and then we put food somewhere um, that everyone has a share in. So essentially, it's like uh, we became one large property with a common kitchen. You know, so we set it ended up becoming set up similar, let's say, to like a uh, you know a campsite with a communal dining room, and uh, maybe everyone sleeps in their own bunk. You know, and you might even have a a fridge and a coffee machine, and you know, and and sometimes you're in your room. But there's one area where everyone at least could eat together, communal uh, you know dining room. And as long as it's properly enclosed, so that becomes like one pro private property. So that, that's essentially what an Erev is. We enclose the area, we, uh, we put food somewhere, and then we're one large um, enclosed uh, shared property. And anyone can go to that food that's for the Erev and they could eat it. Um, so that's Shabbos. If there's no Erev, we can't carry in a public domain. Yontav, though, we're allowed to carry. Afilu, masha'ena l'sorech oichel nefesh, even not for the sake of food. So as we as we explained um, in the beginning of, of the chapter, we said that uh, all the malachas, all the forbidden type activities that we can't do in Shabbos, apply in Yontav as well. But there's an exception. The exception is oichel nefesh, for preparation for food. And then we said many of these uh, things are you allowed to do for food. Once you're allowed to do for food, you're also now allowed to do it for something that's not food. So carrying was an example that I gave several times. And here's the, uh, the what's actually written. As since you're allowed to carry food, so I can, uh, you know, I'm going to be a guest in someone's house in Yontav, and there's no Erev, I'm allowed to carry a challah and a, and a, and a, and a bottle of wine and whatever else we're going to eat. And once I'm allowed to do that, I can carry also whatever else I need for Yontav. A machsa, a siddha, you know, a luv and esrog, a shoifa, whatever it is. So, vavad shiaba ezet sarach acha. But this thing you carry has to have another purpose. Like you can't carry something that doesn't have a purpose. Abu shloy the sarach klal. If there's no purpose at all, you know, if someone wants to carry, I don't know. He wants to wear a, st a stuffed parrot on his shoulder. I don't know. Sure, this maybe is going to say that has a purpose. It's his decoration, you know. Unless, uh, I don't know. But, you know, something has no purpose. So an example. How about, how about yeah. an, an example of a weekday sitter? And it's now a yuntif. Uh Yeah. Although there is a little bit of overlap, so it could technically use it. Mm. And you know, But let's say same example. A person, he could take the keys to his house, right? He needs the keys to his house. Um, that's for Yontav, right? He needs to be there to safely close his house up and and then let himself back in. But on the same key ring are his car keys. So those ones he doesn't need on Yontav. He needs to take them off. He can't carry them if there's not Erev. Right? Today, with all the uh, you know little buttons on the car keys, you have to be careful anyway. On the, but besides that, let's say this is a good old fashioned, good old fashioned key. It's uh, you have to be careful. No, so you can't carry it. So that one has no purpose. So if there's no purpose at all, also the height seat, you can't carry it out on Yontav. Kim b'makim shemutal the height of Except in a situation, a place we're allowed to carry on Shabbos, like an Erev, for example. The gam l'tzarech oichel nefesh. Now, even oichel nefesh, even food, kagoin, for example, kada yayin, bottles of, uh, well, kada is like kegs of wine. So I, I don't, I don't know how much they're planning to drink of it. Sounds like a good yontav meal. <laughs> Bring a few kegs. You know, it's uh, 
<laughs> but anyway, like you saw, Masa Godel commercial Isabel You can't carry, uh, you know, like a huge burden like you would on a weekday. We're going to slap who knows how much. Ellie Shana, unless you make some type of uh, carry it in an unusual way. And if you can't change how you carry it, it's too heavy. You're going to have lots of guests. Right? Yontav, it's your, you know, uh, someone's bermitzah on the Yontav, and you have to bring, uh, you know, uh, 10, 10, 10, uh, 10, 10 cartons of wine for all the guests. Just the media family, right? Just uh, some families works that way. It's that many people. So, uh, then you can carry it. If you need to take it on the little trolley, take it on the trolley, whatever you need to do if you don't have any other way to do it. But if you do have another way, we should try and, you know, not to make it look like we're treating it as a weekday. Okay. Lamed Hay, 35. All the malachas that we're allowed to do on Yontav. Now we said we're allowed to cook, we're allowed to do all these things. But this is for the needs of a human being, right? That's when we're allowed to cook for a human being. I was sort of but for an animal, it doesn't work that way. Because what does the Possek say? What does the verse say that allows us to cook? Yeaselechem should be done for you. But our Shainan, that we learn from this, the, the terminology, the chem. Loyla Bahama, you means people, not animals. And therefore, Asala Vashal, Olahitsi, Aizdom Sah Bahim. You can't cook, you can't cook anything, and you can't carry outside an aid of anything for an animal. Kamosh Bashabas, it's exactly like Shabbos. So um this this allowance to be able to do these things is only for a person. All right. Now we're going to even say within a person, within people, we also have limitations. Lama involved thirty six. No questions that I'm getting getting worried. Getting worried. It's uh. All right. I hope uh. Hope it's all clear. Asala Vashal Avis the Sarakha Goy, we also we can't cook or bake for a non Jew on Yontav. Ah, because it says again, Lachem for you. For you. So last time we were saying human as contrast to uh, to an animal. Obviously, non Jews are human as well. So we're not it's not that, but but you means you, you who are keeping Yontav. You're the person who's keeping Yontav. Achmish, Yeshlem, Shars, Goy. But let's say, for an example, you have a, uh, you have a non Jewish, uh, you know, waiter, the butler. And, uh, and it's not fair to have someone uh, serving the meal and they can't eat as well. Then, You're allowed to add a little more into the one pot so this person has food as well. So we can't put on a separate pot because that's doing a, a separate act of cooking. But once we're cooking for ourselves on Shabbos, and let's say we need 10 pieces, so you put in another piece. This person's also going to have a piece. So you cook 11. And that also then is for the uh, the the waiter or the but the person is helping. Okay, but if you have a distinguished non-Jew, so uh, we're going to see also Yosef, you can't even add. So you can't invite the President of the United States to your uh, to Yontav meal. Okay, and I'm not getting to politics as to whether the President is an important person or not. You know, I think, you know, I'm hoping to say, oh, but we presume he is, right? So we, uh, you can't invite a distinguished person, and it doesn't have to be someone that distinguished, you know. Then we can't even add, right? We can't even add the food because what's going to happen 
is you can't cook especially for him. And once once you haven't distinguished, so when it's the waiter, you chuck something in, you know, obviously it's, 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 it's not nice to make the waiter work all through the meal and you can't eat anything. So you whack something in. Yes, it's for him, but you don't intend to cook for him. But when you cook for a distinguished person, someone important, you get, you're going to make sure the food's exactly right and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, as it should be and, and this. So then even if you're just adding, you are going to be doing extra things and cooking on their behalf. And not only that, even if you cooked for a Jew or you baked for yourself, right? I made myself nice, fresh challah and uh, and uh, a few steaks I was planning to have for myself. Asked the husband, go shakla imoy. I can't invite to come and join me in the meal. <clears throat> this distinguished person. But ach go shen mechuba boy. But someone who's not so distinguished. So it's uh, it's your neighbor. You know, you still see it. You know, it's your friend, but it's not like uh, you're not inviting the president. You can give him anything else that you've already cooked or baked. So it's not, not a problem. Again, can't invite him, especially. Um, so that's 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 for food to cook. Lafa is past, but to bake bread, the Philippish will go also you can't even bake bread uh, for the waiter. Why? Because bread is a uh, is much extra bother so it's, it's, it's um you know they used to like have to stick each piece of bread on the side of the oven you know it's, it wasn't like nice pans and things that we have today you know you bake a loaf of bread and you make a few slices and like uh used to be like in Tamil times it was uh, like a pita bread and they used to stick it on the side of the was a whole effort to get it on and get it off. Today wouldn't be any different from any other food. Um, <clears throat> so just as we can't uh, cook, especially for the non-Jew, because, because also we can't carry outside where there's no Erev for a non-Jew. Unless it's a place that you're allowed to carry on Shabbos. If it's a place you're allowed to carry on Shabbos, then there's not a problem. If it's a place that you couldn't carry there on Shabbos, then um, then it can only be for a need of Yontav, meaning a need of Yontav for someone who keeps Yontav. Okay. Chapter 99. Any questions on chapter 98 before we move on to 99? No. No, okay. Ninety-nine. Dine Muksa The laws of Muksa on Yontav. So we, we did quite extensive uh, study of Muksa at Shabbos. And it applies on Yontav as well, not exactly the same. So a, a classic example to try and understand the context of Muksa would be, let's say, a pen. Let's use a pen as an example. So the malacha, the forbidden creative activity that we can't do on Shabbos, and we'll talk about Shabbos first and we'll apply it to Yom Tov, is you can't write, right? You can't write on, on Yom Tov, on Shabbos. You can't write on Yom Tov either, but let's talk about Shabbos. You can't write on Shabbos. So if a person was allowed to play, let's say with this pencil, you know, there's a lot of people, when they talk, they like to uh, fiddle with a pencil or something. Then what's going to happen is while they're talking, they'll start doodling. A lot of people, you know, people play pens, they doodle various things. And without realizing, they have now broken Shabbos. So since this pen serves no Shabbos purpose, there's no purpose for a pencil on Shabbos. So we're going to say that it is muksa. I can't move it on Shabbos. So since I can't move it, if I absently mind, you know, absentmindedly pick it up, so I've got the pencil, and I go, whoops, muksa, and I put it down. I didn't actually do the malacha, as opposed to if I'm allowed to play with it, and then I do something absentmindedly, then I've actually drawn or or written, and I've broken Shabbos, God forbid. 
So by making it muksa, this is a fence around the Torah. So it's anything that has no purpose on Shabbos, no Shabbos purpose, we say it's it's forbidden to use, and um, and that's called muksa. So, how does yeah, David? But what about matches? Because matches you can't use on Shabbos or muksa, but right. on Yantif. Right, so we're going to see these differences between Muksa, Shabbos, and Yontav. So I just gave an introduction, you know, concept how it applies on Shabbos. And now this chapter is going to tell us how it applies on Yontav. Right, so Aleph. Kal Muksa Ha'asa Betilta B'Shabbos. Anything that's Muksa, which means you're not allowed to move it on Shabbos. Asa Gamba Yontav. So we start with the general rule. It's also forbidden on Yontav. Except we'll have some exceptions. But in concept, just as it applies on Shabbos, it applies on Yontav. The gam v'yesh omrim, and the those that say, the gam muksa midas, a muksa machmas unas, mius, that there's also these other categories that, um, so das means that you, in your mind, you made it muksa. And mius means because they're, they're re repulsive. So give an example. Um, uh, so muksa for, in, in your mind, your mind made it. In other words, there might be something that you could potentially have a Shabbos use. Um, I should want to give you examples here. Be better with examples. So after peace and matunim mishabbos, even though those ones are for, permitted on Shabbos, nevertheless, a surim beyontif, you can't use it on yontif. In other words, in a certain respect, we're being stricter with yontif muksa than Shabbos muksa. Why? In everything else, Yontav is more lenient. Why all of a sudden are we being stricter? It's because as follows. We know that Shabbos is very strict. Everyone understands Shabbos is very strict. Okay, so there's certain things all of a sudden you're allowed to uh, move on muksa. So let's have an example. Something that's mios is disgusting. So let's say a dirty diaper. Right? Dirty diaper. Now, a dirty, a used diaper has no purpose anymore on Shabbos. So therefore, it's muksa. But on Shabbos, you don't have to leave it sitting in the middle of the room, smelling the whole room up. Or, you know, it's it's you're, you're allowed to go and take it and put it in the garbage. Right? Because removing something that's that's repulsive, that's, that's we said we made, when they made a decree on muksa, when they made the decree, they never put it on things like that. There is an opinion, and we're going to see how it actually applies, that on Yontav we're going to be strict. Because since Yontav is generally more muksa, if we start going with all the leniencies that apply to other things, then people will end up not taking Yontav seriously and they'll do all kinds of mocha. So we have to be a little more strict on it because it's lenient, so people don't get too lenient. Right? Therefore, so what's what's an example how we apply this? You had fruit that you that you that you decided that you're gonna sell them. Right? So let's just keep it simple. Let's talk about apples. So this is the example of things becoming muksa from your intention. Right? So if I have apples, apples are not muksa on Shabbos, apples are food. You're allowed to eat apples. But I've got this box of apples, and I decided that Sunday morning I'm taking them to the um, the market to sell. So in my mind, things that till now were food, I designated as um, something to sell. As um, had a mental blank. Merchandise, right? I've designated as merchandise to sell. So it went out of the category of food and it became merchandise. So on Shabbos, if I change my mind, 
I can handle on Shabbos. I can take the food on Shabbos. On Yom Tov, there's an opinion that I'm not allowed. So, food that I designated as merchandise, asurim b'yontif. They stay muksa on yontif. Because if people start getting, oh, I can touch this, that was merchandise, we're worried that since yontif is more lenient, it's going to start dealing with all kinds of merchandise. So, we, we're strict on the muksa in a certain respect. So that's one opinion. They have to be whatever they were designated before Yontif. So if they were designated to eat, no problem. If they were designated as something set aside for sale, that's it. Finished. So if he says, This fruit I'm going to eat, those ones you can. So that was one opinion says it's forbidden. And there's another opinion says he can't take the whole box. Now they've designated for merchandise, he can't change his mind and take the whole box. But if he takes out a little bit, takes one apple and goes in the other room and eats the apple. And then he goes back to his garage where he's keeping it and he takes another apple. Then as long as it's not obvious and he and he, he doesn't do it in the regular way, then then he's allowed. So there is a view that it's even a little bit stricter, looks a little bit stricter in a certain respect on, uh, on Yontif. All right. So I guess we, that's time for today. Any questions before we finish up? All right. So I hope that means that it was all clear and not, not, uh, all confusing and boring. Yeah. But, uh, all right. So we'll continue tomorrow, God willing. Have a Thanks. wonderful evening. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, Take Rabbi. Care. Thank you. Yeah, everybody. Bye.